and story about the two of us. Um, well, this summer, I went on a six-week mission trip called Operation Barnabas, and what we did, uh, we just went on the east coast of the United States, and, or the northeast, I guess, and we like went to nursing homes, and we helped out in various uh, service projects in the area, and we also, like we sang, we did uh, various performances as well. And it just kind of spurred my um, passion for missions. And while Olivia was on that trip, I spent my part of my summer in Haiti. Um, I spent the month of June as an intern with the organization CPR3. Um, I got to lead different teams. I got to learn a lot, a lot, a lot, um, about culture, about um, mission work, and the right and wrong ways to handle different really big part that I learned while I was there. Um, I had to read different books before I went to prepare me. And one of them was called Helping Without Hurting. And it's about doing mission work with a biblical aspect, talking about, um, yes, we need to care for the poor. Yes, we need to spiritually treat people. Um, but there's also a way that we can try to help people while we're actually in reality hurting them. Um, so what we talk about is there's a three-stage process in when disaster strikes. So like when the earthquake hit Haiti in 2010, estimates to kill like 400,000 to 600,000 people. There was never a real complete total. Um, but at that point, that's when you hit the release stage, um, getting people back on their feet. So getting them out of broken buildings, getting them so they're okay, so they're stable. That's the necessary point for food, water, clothing, things like that. The next stage is rehabilitation, getting them back to where they were when the disaster hit. So getting people back into somewhat of a shelter, into somewhat of getting regular food, getting regular water for them. And then the last stage is the stage that not many people know about is development, and that's growing past where the disaster was. So getting people out of even where poverty was at that point, growing them up. Um, like one of the parts that we talked about a lot we were told that Haiti has a 78% unemployment rate. So that's what they're really hurting with. It's not that they like need material things. Like we could even, are you okay? Oh. <laughs> um, it's not that they need material things. Like you even could even walk on along the street and ask a Haitian, like, what is poverty to you? What is poor to you? And they'll say, not the American um, lack of food, lack of water, lack of housing, lack of shelter, lack of clothes. That's the American first world way to answer things. But like that poverty way, I have a lack of So like, after the earthquake, um, the U.S. poured in with tons and tons and tons of rice. And that was great in, re in the relief and rehabilitation stage. But then when the switch, they hit the development stage, they destroyed the rice economy. Like, there's no jobs for rice. So we're hurting people when we're actually trying to help. And like, a lot of um, mission strip teams, when they go to places like Haiti or any other third world country, they'll take clothing. Um, and while that's a great and like noble cause, handing clothes to kids on the street, you're taking away jobs from the women in market. So you're also, in turn, what you think you're doing is really good for the kids that are running around without a shirt on. You're actually like hurting the mother in market that doesn't have the commercial home and feed her kid that day. So ways to change that is kind of what our goal was. We, our initial, uh, I guess you could say, view of what our project, what we thought it would be, was that we would take our church, um, Brighton Chapel and Howe, and we would partner with uh, CPR3 to kind of adopt a village, uh, build a church, and uh, just partner with the people. So that, so the essence of partnership, um, we as an American church would send a small team of like leaders to go down to pick a pastor out of seminary and to um, the pastors working with the pastor at that point, pick a village, build a church from the ground up, and start it from there. So like on a normal mission trip team, you might go down and you'll like do a service project, and then you go home, and then you'll never go see those people again. But in a partnership, we'd be returning to the same village, the same people, working with the same pastor every single time. So like the pastors I worked with, um, one of them asked for an English class, so he could open it up to, he had like older teens and younger adults, so they could go work in the tourism industry so they could teach, or so they could talk to people in English, give them options for jobs. Um, another one asked for jewelry and embroidery and sewing classes, so he could teach his women how to grow 
grow their own things to sell in market or sell in tourism industries, things like that, and essence of a partnership. So we could teach and use our skills instead of just going and building a wall or going and handing things out on the side of the street. So along with the partnership, um, which I already talked about before we started, but we're also taking a team down next summer um, at the end of July. Looks like I'm with degrees. It's <laughs> <laughs> really hot. <laughs> um, so currently, um, I think we have 31 people going, which that part kind of terrifies me because that's a lot, a lot of people to get on an airplane and everybody get their bags and that's a lot of people to take care of all the time. So, but I'm also super excited because it's, most people, it's their first time out of the country, it's their first time going on a mission trip in general, so I'm also really excited for that. So we, with the partnership, um, that's kind of like a little yellow, so that was going to be our area where our partnership was going to be, um, not too far away from like the airport capital, um, that's where our team would go, things like that. We'll still be in that general area, so things like that. Um, going to see, going to help kids. This is just kind of our various benchmarks that we had set um, initially um, when we sat down and first talked about our project, got it all set down. Um, so our first meeting that we had, uh, well, apart from with each other, was to meet with the outreach committee at our church, which is kind of like um, they organize the money um, to hand out to like various like ministries and uh, organizations. Missionaries yeah, missionaries around the world. They handle our mission budget. Yeah. So. Okay, so our second benchmark was meeting with our elders to get final approval. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, our third benchmark was to tell our youth group and those going on the trip, uh, like adults and stuff or chaperones, uh, that we are planning on going to Haiti. Uh, we didn't quite want to bring up the partnership at this point just because there were various steps that it had to be approved through. So we just initially announced this because this was approved like instantly. So. Okay, so our next one, um, setting dates for trip meetings. Currently we've been meeting once a month. We're leading the meetings. Um, about the first or second Sunday of the month is when we've been going. Um, day to purchase plane tickets is March 1st, and then fundraising deadlines, like our current fundraising deadline, is everyone on the team has to have $750 by the time March 1st rolls around so we can get the plane tickets bought. So we can go and get them at a reasonable price, is what we're hoping. Uh, this benchmark is kind of, you know, come as you go. Uh, because there have been uh, different like meeting topics, um, we just like this past week, for example, uh, we talked about. Well, actually, I wasn't there. It was emergency. Emergency. Other but, reasons. Yeah, other reasons. Um, <laughs> uh, we just we talked about various things. Like uh, our first meeting, actually, we talked about like compassion and you know like what Jesus calls us to um, as Christians to be compassionate to those um, around us and in foreign countries. And different requirements, um, actually this past Sunday was do a front and back devotional that we each had to do um, just to kind of get us, get our mindset prepared for what we're going to be doing. Um, we have kind of gone about this with a partnership. Um, there's a financial aspect and then there was, um, my dad throws these on the ground a year and then there's $10,000 a year. There's also a $2,500 startup fee um, that we were gonna place upon ourselves to raise that money. It was kind of started uh, back in corn school. We had a booth raising money through that. But again, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> and this, at this stage, we were planning on announcing the partnership to the entire church, just letting them know uh, what it meant, um, financial um, obligations and uh, various things. Like, we had to have 30 people there. Uh, in a, it, we had to have 30 people on the ground um, there a year. Um, it could be like three groups of 10, or just a group of 30, and we had to have $10,000 to them a year, including the $2,500 that uh, startup fee that we just talked about. And the last one is raising 80% of our team cost. Um, and so 
we're in the process of that. Two members are required to send out some initial letters, um, and we have to have all of our funds raised by the, about a month before we leave. So we're hoping to get it done before then. Um, we've got like the Valentine's fundraisers coming up. We've got um, I think it's six days scheduled for for pit chicken. Yes, over like I think yeah. there's like six different opportunities for that. So there's a lot of extra stuff going on. Over going and helping people in need um, who are poor. Yes, they, they are poor, but we're also helping them in a real way to teach, to grow, so they can learn without us hurting them in the process. And also bringing that back home, because it is, it's very important to bring it back, because there are people here in America that are hurting, that are in some sort of poverty, that are in some sort of circumstance that we may not know very much about. But learning about how to handle it in different situations is really important. So if we can see kids here and in there. Like Miguel. Okay, so <laughs> the real story. Here's the rough part. Right. I promise myself I'm not going to get emotional about it today because I'm done with that. Um, we met with our outreach committee back in September. They absolutely loved the idea of the partnership. They were totally on board. They said, yes, this is awesome. This is fantastic. We love this. Um, we're going to put you in our budget right now. Like, this is great. We need opportunities for adults in our church to go out and do mission work, to do things like this. Um, so we were really excited. Like, you know, this is going great. Um, we met with our elders a few weeks afterwards. Elders are like our leaders of the church. service Sunday school and second service and then after church to help with our children's Christmas program so it was a long day for me hearing that at 8 o'clock in the morning and then I had to do 
still doing great. We're still going on a trip, and we're still, it'll be okay. It'll be okay, it'll be okay. Um, but it got to the point where an email was sent out that night um, expressing some concerns. And so the next night was a Monday night. She was the other team. quite a few formal and informal meetings um, with different leaders and different people that have kind of helped us along the way, trying to not necessarily question authority, but ask questions and say, like, why was this done? And what was your idea of this thing? So um, at this point, we've reached a standstill um, where we're going to kind of let it slide for a little bit. And we'll see how this, how the trip goes. Um, we're still taking the trip. It's you know, just a little different out from my aspect. Um, but there's been a lot of talk. And then we had to go back and tell, like I had to go back and tell my supervisors, like, hey, what? Never mind. All the work that you've done. So it's been rough. Um, but I mean, we're still taking the team down, which is still a good experience for everybody to have. And so I'm really excited to still for the team. So. And we were actually up in front that this is possible. Um, it's possible for us in the next couple of years to maybe could reconsider this option of a partnership. Our video is broken, so we're not going to show you that. But these are some of our um, the really so like now the really big part that we're playing is leading the team. So like in our notebook, we've got um, our different trip notes, different meeting topics, and stuff that we've talked about. Like, like I said, our first one was on compassion. We had talked about compassion um, in like a scriptural sense, and I've talked about compassion in a mission sense. Um, this past meeting, I talked about testimonies. Um, uh, meeting before, we did a study on a book that I read uh, called Radical, Taking Your Faith Back from the American Dream, and how three different points that were in that. Um, just things like that. This is uh, for our school uh, wide learning outcomes, how they've helped us to achieve uh, at least what we have in the process of things. Our written communication has, I mean, it's been pretty great. You know, with the written proposals and the draft and everything, we definitely had to um, communicate to people. And also uh, with our notes and stuff, sharing those, I would consider that written communication. I mentioned letters too. Oh, yes. With work without work ethic, there's no way we would have accomplished what we have so far. Uh, there's just a lot of time that we put into this. Um, even just for just the trip, even without the partnership, you know, there's still a lot of planning that we had to do as far as deadlines, date or meeting dates, and what we're going to talk about in the meetings. It's just it requires a lot of time and work. with this um, between the two of us and between 
uh, various board members um, from the church, or elders uh, from the church, and just, I mean, like with you guys and uh, communicating our ideas to you, and with uh, various uh, people who are, like, going on the trip this summer, and the adults who are chaperoning, and with our youth pastor. I was just going to say um, something that, like, kept coming in front of my mind as you guys were presenting, especially towards the end there, was um, in, in project-based learning, we talk a lot about um, how it's it's not about the end product, you know, it's, it's really all about the process. And this is like the prime, like perfect example of that because, um, you know, I hope that you guys aren't discouraged by um, the fact that things didn't turn out quite the way, you know, that you wanted them to because, well, number one, I mean, they still could uh, eventually, but I mean, gosh, like, what an incredible, you guys have done an incredible, incredible job with this, seriously, organizing this. I know. <coughs> people in the professional world who couldn't put something together like this. So it's, you guys did excellent. I like to come in also but a couple of things though. Um, your CR3 group that you want to partner with, do you do any background check on them at all? I mean what's their ranking, what's their percentage of money that you give them that stays in house and goes out? You know, do you do any of that? I yes, we have the budget right now. Second thing is I really enjoy the fact that you're looking at arguments and theory and helping get to go. Um, I'm part of the Honduras Commission part of the uh, Archer. And we went into a club area and we, we bought an old farmhouse, turned it over and we brought in school, uh, kids off the streets. Some of them left the farmhouse and went back onto the streets, but then they came, some of them came back and we we actually have two from Honduras that graduated there, came back and are in college here in the U.S. with us. But we, from the farmhouse, then we went down and we built um, chicken coops where they're now raising chickens and learning how to do that and to, to be able to, to live on their own. And rabbits, we never thought about rabbits, just different things. And so it's grown now, we, we actually have a farm and we just now purchased another, and this is all being paid out of our church. No, we're not affiliated with anybody down there. We first went with uh, Compassion International, mm -hmm. and uh, but now I mean, we own the property, we own the, the everything, and we pay for the we pay for the, the people that live there that, that takes care of the kids that we call house monitors. You know, so you know it all starts with. The Bible says a grain of sand, you know, and and it, it can grow, and I really like the concept that I mean, that's the right way to go. I think. So, nice job. The, the day, the day I left, we actually um, they went and they picked up like seven chickens to take up in the middle of the mountain for some of the race tricks. Well done. What do you want to do in five years? What do you want to do? Five years? Um, with this project or like where do I want to be? missions, um, I like, got really give me a passion for that. I just, um, so probably after my first four years of college, I, I'm thinking about going into nursing, uh, I could spend like the first couple years just paying back some debt and then saving up some money uh, to head over to, um, Lord knows where. I'm going to bounce off of that because I was going to ask the same thing, but connect. I mean, you, you've learned some amazing adult lessons. And you touched on that as far as professional communication. You said that very tactfully. 
Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I think I know what you wanted to say. What What is the biggest lesson you've learned from this that you, you see yourself applying in your future life, the five years from now that Mrs. Darrell just asked you about? Can I make this spiritual? Sure, you can make it. It's your presentation. It's, um, it's all about you. I definitely do rely on that work because oh, I was real sick when this all happened. <laughs> I was mad. It, I was not a happy person to be around for a while um, because I, I was trying to do it by myself. And I needed that to be the truth. And there's a lot of it um, where I don't want to say our church isn't trusting the Lord because, you know, they, our elders, they, I mean, they're doing what they do. And I, I they trust them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I guess, you know, the same as Aaron, just to trust God, you know, with um, my own personal finances as, um, as I go into the mission field. And um, then also, because the, the church, it just seems like at one point, anyway, I was thinking that the church just wasn't trusting God. And with the money, because, but I do now. Okay. Anyway. You gotta remember that uh, just because you guys are called them to it doesn't mean they are. Yeah, you exactly. That was they're just trying to support, you know, exactly. whatever way they can. The the thing that I think that is the biggest lesson that I can see you guys learn, and I think they agree, is that every, no matter whether you think you're going up, there can always be the drop. Uh, you know, we we had a grandson. Same. A month later, he, he lost almost everything. I mean, he's still alive, but barely. You know, he's striving. But you know what I'm saying? It's like all of a sudden you're excited, and boom. but you learn from those. That's the that's where you learn from your experiences. You know, take that as a learning thing and say, okay, God, 